the set of wavelengths or frequencies or colors, if you like, that an atom emits is known as the spectrum of the atom. And in this video, we're going to take a look at a foundational set of data that move people away from the planetary model, the emission spectrum of the hydrogen atom. So let's think again about the planetary model and about our picture from before that said that the energy of the electron is inversely proportional to its distance from the nucleus, and so it asymptotically approaches zero as we move to higher and higher distances. If the electron is able to assume any old R value, what should we expect for the spectrum of the hydrogen atom? Well, notice that, at least within the constraint that we stay below zero, the electron is able to assume any energy. And we haven't really talked about anything so far that says that the electron has to, for example, jump from one energy to another. It can move, in theory, along this curve continuously. So it can access any energy between E equals zero and E equals negative infinity, which is way down at the bottom of the graph, right? What that means is that as long as we can give the electron enough energy, it should be able to emit a photon of any wavelength, any frequency, any color at all. And here we mean color in the broad sense of any region of the electromagnetic spectrum, the hydrogen atom ought to be able to emit a photon with any possible frequency. So we would expect then, at least within the visible region, a rainbow spectrum, right? Each color is a particular wavelength in here. Each color is a particular lambda. That corresponds to a particular energy via E equals h nu. And by the way, if E equals h nu, then E equals hc over lambda, right? Since nu, the frequency, is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. We saw that before. But anyway, any lambda should be possible since any energy transition is possible, right? That's the prediction of the planetary model. However, this is not what's observed. Instead of a rainbow, what we observe for the emission spectrum of hydrogen, which is shown for you here, is specific discrete frequencies or wavelengths of light emitted. This is actually quite remarkable, right? We only see, for example, a deep purple line, a lighter purple line, a blue line, a light blue line, and a red line. These are the only visible frequencies that are emitted by the hydrogen atom. This indicates then if we stick to the Coulombic model of the relationship between distance and energy, if we stick hard to that model, that means that the electron can only assume certain distances from the nucleus, right? This particular wavelength corresponds to a particular energy which is a transition between two levels. And so that can only be a transition between, say, some distance r1 and another distance r2, right? So the ele electron can only assume certain values of r according to this model based on Coulomb's law and the observed emission spectrum, which is empirical data. A broader picture of the wavelengths of light emitted by the hydrogen atom is shown for you on the right-hand side of this slide we can represent these different R values that the electron can assume using this number n. So n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. We have R1, R2, R3, R4, etc. And the numbers aside each line show you the wavelength of the light emitted for that transition, right? The lines in the visible are part of the Balmer series, and all of these represent transitions to the n equals 2, or the r2 level, right? We've got 656, that's about red, 486, which is the bright blue, we've got 434, which is the darker blue, and then 410 out here. So only very specific wavelengths, only the wavelengths here are emitted or absorbed by hydrogen atoms. To generate the absorption spectrum, by the way, just notice that it's the negative of the emission spectrum. We're looking at the lines that are taken out when we bombard hydrogen atoms with a rainbow, with white light. It may not look like it here, but these wavelengths actually follow a pattern. The pattern they follow is captured in mathematical form by what's called the Rydberg equation. So as it happens, and this was figured out by Rydberg actually long before quantum mechanics came along, the energies of the hydrogen atom are inversely proportional to an integer n. So there's some constant the Rydberg constant, that's what's represented by R infinity, the energies that are allowed for the electrons in the hydrogen atom 
are equal to negative r infinity times 1 over n squared, or negative r infinity over n squared. n is what we'll call a quantum number. It's a counting variable that captures the quantization, or the discretization, of energy. Because n can only be 1, 2, 3, 4, and what have you, n can't take on any old value. It can only take on certain discrete values. Now there are an infinite number of these because n can increase to positive infinity. However, there's a discrete jump between every pair of adjacent what we call energy levels. Just to calibrate you on this, the Rydberg constant has a value of 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. In a unit of energy that's a little more intuitive at the microscopic scale, that's 13.6 electron volts. Remember, too, that the energy of a photon is equal to hc over lambda. So that means that we can use this relation between energy and wavelength to predict the complete spectrum of hydrogen. The idea is just to calculate the gap between two energy levels, say, for example, E3, where n equals 3, and E1. And that's going to be equal to hc over lambda, or h nu where lambda and nu are the wavelength and the frequency of the photon emitted when we do this transition from the n equals 3 level to the n equals 1 level. So this is pretty, pretty interesting. The emission spectrum of the hydrogen atom, first of all, shows us that the continuous planetary model cannot possibly be a good description of the atom, but it leaves open the question of how do we explain this strange quantization of energy levels. In the next video, we're going to really see the origin of quantization in the form of a fundamental equation of nature that comes from physics called the Schrodinger equation.